Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, Mozilla tries to talk sense to Congress. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Let me know in the comments below. It's kind of like asking a brick wall your opinion. I'll be standing there a while. So uh, this article comes from Ars Technica, and I pulled actually all the articles here from Ars Technica just because uh, they had everything conveniently linked. And um, before we actually get into this, we have to go back to an article that I actually covered on my news channel about two years ago. For sale, your private browsing history. So this goes back to, this originally was a thing that started to happen in January of 2017, where the ISPs started to petition the new Repu Republican Congress to roll back the uh, ISP regulations regarding sharing user data. So prior to this point in time, user data for ISPs was completely protected data, kind of like going to a movie store uh, and seeing what somebody else had rented. You know, movie rentals and library cards, things like that is extremely protected data. The reason? Because some congressmen got called out for the smutty videos they were renting from the local video store. And so some people initially just kind of basically said, hey, what you're searching for on the internet is basically the same level of thing and nobody really questioned it. But when we started to have the attack on net neutralities and all these other things, right in the middle of all of this, the ISPs came up and said, hey, we need to be able to do something with this. And of course, some companies use this as a means to sell uh, basically give people discounts if they were allowed to utilize your browsing data to um, use your browsing data to get out there and um, basically sell ads with it. My apologies. So this happened when this occurred. This is really when the latest big, huge boom of pushing and shilling your uh, VPNs happened to come about. Oh man, I was going to jump over to my uh, VPN banner here um, just for fun, but I don't have it on this uh, screen build. Uh, but anyway, uh, when this occurred, this actually did legitimize some of the use of VPNs to protect your browsing data from from your um, ISP. Now, it, all it did though is get kicked the can down the road to the VPN instead. And so, do you trust your ISP more or your VPN more? And neither one's really necessarily the best option. Now, there was actually another video out recently while we're on the topic of VPNs that, you know, that the ISP cannot see the exact data going back and forth if that site is encrypted, but they can see the data on any site that is not encrypted and they can see what sites you are connecting to. And so this is now all out in the open. And so now ISPs can see all of the data that we have as far as what information we are browsing. Like they can see the top level sites we're going to, and there are not technically any restrictions on them using that data and selling your user data in any way, like leasing it like Facebook does or outright selling it or, or anything like that. So that's kind of what happened. Well, in the middle of uh, just the last couple months, we started to see things from both Google and Mozilla over what we would call DNS over HTTPS. In other words, called DOH, and you might have seen some pictures of Homer Simpson. D-O-H, DNS over HTTPS. So the idea here behind DNS over HTTPS is DNS is the no domain name services. This is what tells the internet or tells your web browser where you are going on the internet. So when you are actually accessing servers, you're accessing servers through numbers. So IP numbers, you know, blah, 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 dot, blah, 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 dot, blah, 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 dot, blah, blah, blah. blah. It's hard for us to remember all those numbers at all times. And so we have the domain name registration and the domain names, all they do is they point to the server IPs. Now it's possible to overwrite those. And so this is where you'll have some of your hacks on your modems and, and routers coming in where they are going to replace your DNS services with a malicious DNS server. So you can go to facebook.com. It reserves facebook.com, but it's loading something on their server. If you watch the IP addresses and you know what you're looking for, you can actually spot the problem. But most people do not recognize 
what the IP addresses are, are doing and, and things like that. And so with all of that being said, DNS uh, over HTTPS is a way to encrypt and secure the DNS traffic so that a, a malicious hacker can't see it and your ISP can't see it. So in other words, all of those arguments about using a VPN to protect your, your browsing history from your ISP completely goes away if DNS uh, over HTTPS is a thing. So there's two separate ways of implementing this, and I do not remember all of the details of which one. Google is doing one of them, and Mozilla is doing the other one. So Mozilla is actually arguing here from uh, to Congress on defense of both Mozilla's and Google's approach. The ISPs are coming up and giving misinformation to Congress saying hey, this is going to allow Google, and they're focusing on Google because Chrome takes the majority of this, they're coming and saying, no, this is going to force Google Chrome to push everybody through Google's DNS, and now Google is going to collect all of this data. That is what the overarching idea happens to be. And Mozilla is actually coming in and defending Google and how they're doing it, saying it's not the way we're doing it, but no, this is safe. Now, what both browsers are doing now, and I don't remember if these are implemented yet or yet to be implemented, or there's still some question and debate about it because of what's going on in Congress right now. But the idea is that I know Firefox is looking at the list of DNS providers that you are currently using and seeing if DNS over HTTPS is available as a protocol, it will use that by default. It will never change your DNS. Now, the ones that do support that, uh, the uh, cloud servers, uh, Quad 1, Google's DNS, which is Quad 8, uh, Quad 9 also uses it, I think. And there's a few other ones out there as well. So if you are already using one of those, you can toggle on the browser to use DNS over HTTPS, and that is actually going to protect you from a lot of spying from your ISPs. So if you're using one of those, enabling that is actually a pretty good feature of your browser. And so what happens now, though, is that the ISP lobbies are coming up and trying to spread disinformation to Congress. And so Mozilla comes up and writes them a letter. And here is the letter that they write to Congress. And it's four pages, so we can flip through this a little bit. So they're writing to, uh, they're writing about the concern about the privacy and security practices of internet service providers, particularly as they relate to domain name services provided to the American consumers. Our recent experience in rolling out DNS over HTTPS oh, and an important in privacy and security protection for consumers has raised questions about how the ISPs collect and use sensitive data in their gatekeeper role over the internet usage. With this in mind, a congressional examination of ISP practices may uncover valuable insights, educate the public, and help guide continuing efforts to draft consumer privacy legislation. During the last two years, Mozilla, in partnership with other industry stakeholders, has worked to develop and standardize and deploy DOH, a critical security improvement to the underlying architecture of the internet, a complementary effort to our work to fight ubiquitous web tracking, which is a good noble goal. Uh, DOH will make it harder to spy on or tamper with users' browsing activity and will protect users from DNS providers, including ISPs that can monetize personal data. And if you notice that reference there, they're referencing back to the 2017 rollback where ISPs are like, this is stupid. We need to be able to use this data. We'll never will. We never will use it, but we have to be able to use it if we want to. Kind of insane. Uh, so it says, we believe the that such proactive measures have become uh, um, talk necessary to protect users in light of extensive record of ISP abuse and personal data. So what is this extensive record of ISP use? I need to readjust my camera here. My apologies, it's so washed out in the back and have windows open back there because I'm charging a solar panel. So anyway. Providers uh, sold the real-time location data of their mobile broadband customers to third parties without user knowledge or meaningful consent. One, uh, in one particular case, an intermediary was found to be selling particular sensitive GPS data, which can pinpoint the location of users within a building for over five years. 
ISPs have repeatedly manipulated DNS to serve advertisements to consumers. Comcast has previously injected ads to users connecting to public Wi-Fi hotspots, potentially creating new security vulnerabilities in websites. And last year, CenturyLink injected ads for its paid filtering software and disabled the internet access of its users until they acknowledged this offer. Verizon tracked the internet activity over 100 million users without their consent through super cookies that could not be deleted or circumvented. This allowed Verizon to closely monitor sites that users visited and catalog their interests without their knowledge. AT&T operated a program that required users to pay an extra $29 per month to opt out of the data collection and monetization of their web browsing history for targeted ads. With the company ending the program after public criticism, it has considered reviving it in the current deregulated environment. So four very major, very critical issues that are certainly reasons that we should be concerned so they go on in their letter, unsurprisingly, our work on DOH has prompted a campaign to forestall these privacy and security protections as demonstrated by the recent letter to Congress from major telecommunications associations. That letter contained a number of factual inaccuracies. These have been examined by deta in detail by others, and as such, we will not be giving an in-depth treatment here. Nevertheless, it's important to highlight the underlying premises of the, of the letter. Telecommunications associations are explicitly arguing that ISPs need to be in a position to collect and monetize users' data. This is inconsistent with arguments that they made just two years earlier regarding whether privacy rules were even needed to govern ISP data use. With a 2017 congressional repeal of the broadband privacy order, a substantial gap in consumer privacy protection was created. That gap still exists today, ISPs are people's gateways to the internet, and that gateway can serve as a data collection point providing ISPs with unique access into sensitive browsing information. That is why broadband privacy rules would have required ISPs to get clear consent to use and share subscribers' information. However, those rules are no longer in place. Our approach with DOH attempts to close this part of the regulatory gap through technology and strong legal protections for user privacy. Mozilla's policy establishes strict requirements for, poten uh, for potential Firefox DNS resolvers, including requiring that data is only retained for as long as is necessary to operate the resolver with service. That data only be used for the purpose of operating that service, that partners maintain a privacy notice specifically for the resolver that publicly attests to data collection and policies. Unfortunately, ISPs often do not maintain privacy notices for their DNS services. As a result, their policies are opaque to users. It is unclear what data is being retained, how it is being used, or who it is being shared with. At Mozilla, we believe that tr to truly protect privacy in a combination of technical and regulatory solutions, must be put in place over the last year. We have launched privacy features in the Firefox browser while strongly advocating for federal privacy legislation. We believe that more information regarding ISP practices should be useful to the committee as it continues to its deliberations on this front. We encourage the committee to publicly probe current ISP data collection and use policies. So there is what Firefox had to say. Very interesting stuff uh, in reality. And uh, overall, I would say that if you have the capability, the technical know-how to enable DNS over HTTPS, it would probably be a wise thing to do. Um, I'm going to look into doing this myself. One of the things I want to do is I want to look into all of the, uh, the DOH providers and probably set one of those as my default through my router system. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Cloudflare. <clears throat> um there's just some things that they've done in the past that make me a little leery of them. So I don't necessarily want to use quad one. Does anybody have any information about quad nine? Um, who runs that? Who controls it? Things like that. That's something I'm going to be researching. If you want to drop any information, give me your opinions, good, bad, uh, indifferent. Let me know those um, in the comments. But that's what Firefox had to say. They're trying to talk sense to Congress. Chances are it's not going to work because, hey, here's Firefox. They're trying to do something good and noble here at this point in time. And uh, that just cannot compete with the, the cash bags that the ISP lobbies are coming in bringing to Congress. So uh, that's kind of the thought. That's kind of the take. But uh, just be aware of it. And uh, if you are a person that likes to write your congressman, have them pay attention to this. And uh, just keep an eye out what's going on. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below.